Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little from PokerCoaching.com and today we're going to take a look at a hand where Mike Possel, who by now everyone knows, can see his opponent's cards thanks to some sort of technology and or help from the outside, is going to face off against Matt Berkey, a very, very world-class player, and we're even going to give Matt Berkey position in the hand. Let's take a look at how Matt fares when his opponents, well when one of the, his opponents knows his cards. So we are playing 10, 25, 50 at Stone's Gambling Hall. So there are three blinds. Folds around to Possel in the cutoff. Now, when you're playing in the cutoff with uh, three blinds, you actually need to be tighter than in a normal game with two blinds because you have to worry about, well, three people who have uh, money in the pot with, in, instead of two, right? So instead of there being two blinds, you have to worry about three people. That means you have to be a little bit tighter. Also, you have Matt Berkey in position against you. Here's Matt Berkey here. He really doesn't like folding before the flop. Uh, it's almost as if he's playing where he can see his opponent's cards, except for he can't. He's doing his best just with his very, very sophisticated post-flop abilities. So, Possible raises to 150 bucks, and Berkey decides to call. Now, I would actually say that this call with 8-7 offsuit is too loose. We are playing 140 big blinds deep, but... Berkey, I'm sure, is well aware that Possel plays far too many hands pre-flop. So against someone who plays far too many hands, you want to see as many flops as you can from in position. Also, he probably doesn't mind if Mark comes along in the third big blind, or the third blind. So this is a scenario where I don't actually hate flatting with the 8-7 offsuit, but that said, I would have just folded. I do not fare very well when I play poor cards, so I tend to just fold hands like 8-7 offsuit. Anyway, here we are. Flop comes 7-3-3. Three, three. So, what should Possel do knowing his opponent's cards? Well, in this scenario, he should definitely bet the flop. That said, he may look to get a check raise in against Berkey. Um, because you can kind of expect Berkey to bet this flop quite frequently if you check to him. So, I could either see betting rather large on the flop, like $400, $500, or checking. And I think I would look to check raise, because if you check call, there are a lot of turns that could make Berkey's hand way worse, like any club, overcard, etc. So I think you just want to get money in the pot. Looks like Possible does go for the check. And I do want to make it clear here, if you don't know that your opponent yet to act has anything, I actually think that you should be betting here. You typically want to be betting with your best made hands and your draws. And obviously 6-3 is one of your best hands on 7-3-3. Also, there are lots of draws available. So this is a spot where normally you would bet your 6-3. And I've been through a few of these rather innocuous hands. I know that um, Joey Ingram's gone through all of the incredibly egregious hands on his stream. And a lot of people are already making content on those. So I'm not just going to reiterate those. I want to show the situations where it's not so egregious, but it is still clearly... He's using plays that he would only make if he knew his opponent's cards. Because right here, you would just always bet the flop. It's really bad to not bet the flop because Berkey's going to check behind a lot of the time. And you don't really want to let your opponents realize equity. But Possel can check because he, know he knows Berkey's going to bet. So Berkey does bet 250 bucks, which I think is fine. And Possel decides to just call. Now, I think the jury's still out as to whether or not Possel knows how the board is going to run out. Clearly, if you know that then you can check call here because you know the turn's going to be a low, unconnected card that Berkey just might continue betting on, right? Especially if he thinks Possel is loose and splashy. So this is a situation where Possel, if he does decide to check, should very likely check raise just to get money in the pot with, again, one of his best hands, right? But instead he doesn't. So why wouldn't he do that? It's because he knows the turn is going to be a blank, most likely, which is going to induce Berkey to continue betting. So, Possel should check. Now, Berkey can check or bet this turn. I don't think either play is mandatory. Um, what I would probably do here against someone who I thought was too loose, too splashy, too aggressive, is I would just check behind the 8-7 and then call any river bet as my default play. In cash games in general, though, when you are deeper stacked, it's usually fine to just go for a slightly thinner value than you would in... Um, something like a tournament where you really don't want to go broke. Obviously, we're not playing a tournament here. We're playing 10, 25, 50, a cash game. So I get the idea of betting. 
if you don't expect to get raised very often at all. Because if you do bet here and get raised, you should probably fold. That said, when Postle checks and Berkey bets, Postle should probably go ahead and raise again in this scenario. Because look at all the draws available, right? You normally have to worry about protecting your hand. So when Postle knows Berkey has the H7, he knows he doesn't have to worry about protecting his hand. And also, if he does know the next card that's going to come, he also... Well, I don't know what card's going to come, but I'm going to bet it's going to be a blank if he check calls, and I bet it's going to be a coordinated card if he check raises. That's just a general strategy uh, play right there. Sorry if my kid's running by distracting everyone. He's distracting me. Looks like Berkey does bet about two-thirds pot, which I think is certainly acceptable. And in this scenario, Possel is probably going to call if the river's a blank, He's going to raise if the river is one of the cards that completes one of the obvious draws. So let's just take a look. River is a five. Okay. So now let's think about this. Let's think about this real quick. What would Postle do if he didn't know his opponent's hand? If he doesn't know his opponent's hand here, he would definitely check because Berkey could easily have a five, right? Berkey would bet the flop with six, five and with five, four, right? He would perhaps bet the turn. Maybe, maybe not. Stuff to say. Probably wouldn't, but you never know. He bet the 8-7, so maybe, he'd be, maybe he would view 6-5 uh, the same as 8-7. Who knows? But Berkey could conceivably have some 5s. Probably not, though. Probably not a ton of 5s, which means Berkey most likely has a 7 or a busted draw. And if Berkey has a busted draw, he's going to fold to any bet, right? So that means that Possible should check against those hands. If he has a 7... Well, Postle definitely could consider leading, but the problem with leading is that there are way more busted draws than there are sevens. And also, to be fair, I guess Berkey could have an overpair, and an overpair would probably bet if checked to, I think. So this is an interesting spot where I do think every once in a while Berkey's going to have a five, and Postle really doesn't want to be against a five. Um, he will have some marginal made hands that are going to check behind that may call a small bet, but he also should have a whole lot of busted draws. So if he should have a whole lot of busted draws, this is a spot where Apostle should definitely check. But knowing Berkey has 8-7, what should Apostle do? Well, Apostle should lead. Apostle should make a pretty big bet, I think. In this scenario, Pot's 2,200. If you know your opponent has a 7 and all the draws miss, you should highly consider betting large, like 2,000. I get, again, that 6-5 and 5-4 got there. They would definitely, well, they would consider check calling flop, although I don't know why they wouldn't just bet. They would check call turn, and then they would have the nuts on the river, which would like to lead. So this is a scenario where knowing Berkey has 8-7, leading is the only play that makes sense, because if Postle checks, Berkey is going to check behind every time, I presume. So how much should Postle bet? I think he should bet pretty big, because all the flush draws missed. Those are hands that make logical sense to check call. So I like a big bet from Postle in this scenario, knowing exactly what Berkey has. Let's see how much he chooses. He's taking his time, probably waiting on his intel to come in to say, oh, you're good. <laughs> oh, man. I just, I'm just sitting here looking at him getting angry. What, what a bad individual. All right, he is going to bet, and he bets... Looked like about a thousand bucks. It's a thousand bucks. He can't even cheat right. Nine seventy-five. He can't even cheat right. Berkey is definitely going to call more than nine hundred seventy-five with a seven. I mean, look. I mean, this is just frustrating because he's just so bad. Possel is not good at poker. I guess to be fair, why why does this shock me? Right? People who are not good at poker succumb to cheating, and and try to screw their opponents by being angle shooters, by cheating, etc., etc. And, ugh, he can't even cheat right. <laughs> All right, so what does Berkey do here? Berkey only has one option, and it is to call. And he does. I was going to say, please don't raise Berkey. Please don't turn your hand into a bluff. That would be a big mistake. And Possel wins. And notice here that Berkey didn't actually lose all that much money against Apostle. Because imagine if Apostle just check raises flop, bets turn, bets river. He could easily have won more. So 
somehow, Berkey doesn't lose too much in this scenario. I mean, he still lost, what, $2,000, which is a substantial amount. But it could have gone worse. So I'll review another hand or two from Apostles Massacre of Stone's Gambling Hall. I hope you all enjoy these. Eventually, my kid's outside yelling. Eventually, the actual judge and jury will come, and um, with any luck, you'll be punished. With no luck, you'll just be banned from poker for life. And if you do run into Apostle, clearly, don't let him play cards. Good luck, have fun, enjoy yourselves, and I'll talk to you next time.